Really, it's great to have all of you here to worship Jesus together today. School is back in session for, for many of us and, and our kids. Learning and knowledge are good things. It's good to have the kids back in school. But today the Bible reminds us that to be truly wise, we need more than what you're going to get at school. We need God's Word to give us the, the true wisdom that we need about us and about our lives. Each service we have a verse of the day that's the theme of our worship service. If you open up your worship folder to page 3, at the top of the page you can see our verse of the day for today. It's from the book of Proverbs, the book of wisdom in the Bible. Let's read that verse together. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom and knowledge of the Holy One is understanding. The Bible's going to tell us today that if we want to be truly wise, we need more than what we just learned from books. We need to have the, the fear of the Lord. It's God and His Word that make us truly wise. So may God bless us as we worship Him together. We'll sing our opening hymn, which is really a prayer to do exactly what we just talked about, the hymn, Speak, O Lord. It's us asking God to speak to us and give us His Word. Just note that, unfortunately, you have to turn the page as you go through the hymn, so don't get lost. We'll sing the hymn together. Speak, O Lord. Please stand.
the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Bible warns, there is a way that appears to be right, but in the end it leads to death. Too often we followed our own sinful ways instead of the way of the Lord. Even worse, when we've sinned, we, we blame God for what we ourselves have done. A person's own folly leads to their ruin, yet their heart rages against the Lord. Instead, let's confess our sins together to God. Holy and merciful Father, I confess that I am by nature sinful and that I have disobeyed you in my thoughts, words, and actions. I have done what is evil and failed to do what is good. For this I deserve your punishment, both now and in eternity. But I am truly sorry for my sins, and trusting in my Savior Jesus Christ, I pray, Lord, have mercy on me, a sinner. We have a moment of silence so that each of us can confess our sins privately to God. The Bible says, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. God's greatest wisdom is found at the cross of Jesus who died to pay for the sins of the world. For the message of the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing, but to us who are being saved, it is the power of God. God, our Heavenly Father, has been merciful to us and has given his only Son, Jesus, to be the atoning sacrifice for our sins. Therefore, as a called servant of Christ and by his authority, I forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. God's forgiveness in our hearts, let's sing our, our next song, a song of praise. There is a Redeemer.
Now listen to our lessons from God's Word in the Bible. Our first lesson is from the Bible's book of, of wisdom, the book of Proverbs chapter 9. Here God invites us to, to come to Him, to come to His Word, and to learn how to be wise. Wisdom has built her house. She has set up its seven pillars. She has prepared her meat and mixed her wine. She has also set her table She has sent out her servants and she calls from the highest point of the city, let all who are simple come to my house. To those who have no sense, she says, come eat my food and drink the wine I mixed. Leave your simple ways and you will live. Walk in the way of insight. Whoever corrects a mocker incites insults. Whoever rebukes the wicked incurs abuse. Do not rebuke mockers or they will hate you. Rebuke the wise and they will love you. Instruct the wise and they will be wiser still. Teach the righteous and they will add to their learning. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom and knowledge of the Holy One is understanding. This is God's word. Before you turn the page, now that I just heard you all turn the page, I want to say one thing about one of those verses. Look again. At verse 8. The Bible talks a lot about wisdom and often what the Bible says is not what we expect. I, I really appreciate the message that we hear in verse 8. It says, Do not rebuke mockers or they will hate you. The Bible says here's a sign that your heart isn't right, that you're not wise. If someone rebukes you for your sin and you get upset about it, then you're in the wrong place. But look at how it continues. Rebuke the wise and they will love you. Isn't that counterintuitive? But God says if a wise person, if a believer in Jesus has someone else point out their sins to them, instead of getting angry or defensive, how do they react? They appreciate it. They love it and This is our prayer that God would give us wise hearts like that when when people who care about us point out the, the sin in our lives that instead of being defensive or angry, that we would love them because we need God, we need his word to make us wise. Now you can turn the page. You're gonna be cautious now the rest of the service, aren't you? About turning the page. On the next page, we have our our psalm for today. It's Psalm 1, the very first of the psalms. And it shouldn't surprise us that the start of the psalm, Psalm 1, encourages us to meditate day and night on God and his word. Like we sometimes do, we're going to sing this little refrain repeatedly, and then we'll read the verses of the psalm responsively. And just like you're getting used to, there's no introduction to that little refrain. So ready or not, we're going to sing it. Okay? Let's join in Psalm 1. And are there Blessed is the one who does not walk in step with the wicked or stand in the way that sinners take or sit in the company of mockers but whose delight is in the law of the Lord and who meditates on his law day and night. That tree is like a, that person is like a tree planted by streams of water, which yields its fruit in season and whose leaf does not wither. Whatever they do, prosper. Not so the wicked. They are like chaff that the wind blows away. Therefore, the wicked will not stand in the judgment, nor sinners in the assembly of the righteous. For the Lord watches over the way of the righteous, but the way of the wicked leads to destruction. I love the picture that that psalm gives us about what it's like to be connected to God's word. It says if you're you're hearing God's word, you're like this huge tree planted by streams of water. It's 
Isn't that a beautiful picture? To have our roots in God, no matter what's happening around us, to have strength. That's what we get when we base our lives on God and his word. Please rise now as we hear our gospel lesson. Our gospel is from John chapter 6. Just like we heard last week, we hear Jesus say that he's the bread of life. And he tells us that we need his body and blood. We need his flesh because that's what he gave up on the cross to save us from our sins. Jesus says, I am the living bread that came down from heaven. Whoever eats this bread will live forever. This bread is my flesh, which I will give for the life of the world. Then the Jews began to argue sharply among themselves. How can this man give us his flesh to eat? Jesus tr said to them, Very truly I tell you, unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you have no life in you. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood has eternal life, and I will raise them up at the last day. For my flesh is real food and my blood is real drink. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood remains in me and I in them. Just as the living Father sent me, and I live because of the Father, so the one who feeds on me will live because of me. This is the bread that came down from heaven. Your ancestors ate manna and died, but whoever feeds on this bread will live forever. He said this while teaching in the synagogue in Capernaum. This is the gospel of our Lord. You may be seated. Join us sing our next song, Christ Be My Leader. During the third verse of the song, the, the young children who are here today are encouraged to come and sit on the front steps for our children's devotion. Join in singing our song. Good morning. It's great to have all of you guys up here. How many of you guys this last week went back to school? Some of you? So I'm going to ask you the, the back to school question. So who's your teacher? Oh, she sounds nice. Wow, you have more than one teacher. Sounds good. Oh, I know your teachers. Who's your teacher? Who's your teacher? You have six of them. Oh, you don't have to list them all off. That's a lot of teachers. It's great to go back to school, and I'm thankful that you all have teachers, and I'm sure you're going to learn a lot of things. But did you notice in the song that we just sang, it said that somebody else is actually our teacher. Did you catch who it was? God. Did you know which part of God? The Father, Jesus, the Holy Spirit. Oh, that was a hard question, huh? We said, Christ, be my teacher. Who's Christ? Jesus. Did you know that Jesus is also your teacher? 
fact, in our service today, we're hearing that we need Jesus to teach us if we really want to be smart, if we really want to be wise. And today, I want to remind you of two things that Jesus teaches you that you will never hear at your school. Did you know there's two things Jesus teaches you that you'll never hear at your school? Here's the first one. God made you. Did you know that? God made you just the way he wants you to be. He made you a boy or girl. He made you short or tall. God made you just the way he wants you to be. Isn't that cool? You're not just an accident. You're not just an animal. God made you. That's what Jesus teaches us. Here's the other thing that Jesus teaches you that you'll never hear at school. Do you know what it is? Jesus died to save you. Isn't that great to know? That Jesus loves you so much that he died on the cross to take away all of your sins and you get to go to heaven because you believe in Jesus. Isn't that cool? And so as you go back to school, I hope and pray that you learn a whole lot of things. But I want you to remember that Jesus teaches you even more and he especially teaches you this, that God made you just the way he wants you to be and that Jesus died to save you so that you can go to heaven. It's great to have Jesus as our teacher. Can you fold your hands and bow your heads and let's say a prayer? Dear Jesus, we're glad to, to be able to go back to school. We're also glad that we learn from you. Thank you for making us. Thank you for saving us. Help us always to believe in you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thanks for coming up here today. God bless your day. Our final lesson from God's Word and the lesson for our sermon today is from the, the book of Ephesians in the New Testament, chapter 5. Here, as kids are going back to school, we, we hear some of God's rules for our lives as Christians. Follow God's example, therefore, as dearly loved children and walk in the way of love. Just as Christ loved us and gave himself up for us as a fragrant offering and sacrifice to God. But among you, there must not be even a hint of sexual immorality or any kind of impurity or of greed because these are improper for God's holy people. Nor should there be obscenity, foolish talk, or coarse joking which are out of place, but rather thanksgiving. For of this you can be sure, no immoral, impure, or greedy person, such a person as an idolater, has any inheritance in the kingdom of Christ and of God. Let no one deceive you with empty words. For because of such things, God's wrath comes on those who are disobedient. Therefore, do not be partners with them. For you were once darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. Live as children of light. For the fruit of the light consists in all goodness, righteousness, and truth. And find out what pleases the Lord. Have nothing to do with the fruitless deeds of darkness, but rather expose them. It is shameful even to mention what the disobedient do in secret. But everything exposed by the light becomes visible, and everything that is illuminated becomes a light. This is why it is said, Wake up, sleeper, rise from the dead, and Christ will shine on you. Be very careful then how you live, not as unwise but as wise, making the most of every opportunity because the days are evil. Therefore do not be foolish, but understand what God's will is. Do not get drunk on wine, which leads to debauchery. Instead, be filled with the Spirit, speaking to one another with psalms, hymns, and songs from the Spirit. Sing and make music from your heart to the Lord always giving thanks to God the Father for everything in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. This is God's word. Dear friends in Jesus, with kids going back to school, the, the first week of school, 
always brings the same thing. Lots of rules. Do your kids who are going to school, is that true? Lots of rules. Rules about the classroom and the hallway and the lunchroom and recess. Lots and lots of rules. And so do you know what that means? That means this, this weekend, there are a whole lot of kids at home thinking about how to get around the rules. Right? About what they can get away with. About how far they can push it. Kids are really good at this. A teacher makes a rule, draws a line, and kids try to figure out how close to that line they can get without getting in trouble. It's just that it's not kids who do that. I don't think we ever grow out of that. This is what we do as human beings. If someone draws a line, we see how close we can get to it without getting in trouble. Like the speed limit. Right? How fast can we go without getting caught or paying taxes? Right? How little can we get by with paying without getting in trouble? You never grow out of that. Right? We see a line and we see how close can I get without going over. But we don't just do that with our human rules. We also do that with God's rules, with God's commands. We hear God say something in his word and we think, how, how close to that can I get without actually sinning? Right? How far can I push it? Does that sound like you and me? If it does, then we need to watch out. Because when God gives us rules, when he gives us his commands for our lives as Christians, God talks in a way that's different from the way other people talk about rules. Here, here's what God says. He says, but among you, there must not be even a hint of sexual immorality or of any kind of impurity or of greed, for these are improper for God's holy people. When it comes to sin, how close does God say we should go? Among you, there must not be even a hint of Is that what you think about sinful things? Not a hint. Maybe think of it this way. Sin is like a poison. How much poison do you want with your food today? Well, just a little bit's okay. Right, just as long as it's not too much. No way. Food in my poison, not a hint. I don't want any of it. But are we, are we content with poison in our hearts? poison in our lives? I think God chose the, the perfect example to use as he, he tells us about this. He, he chooses sexual sins. Among you there must not be even a hint of sexual immorality or of any kind of impurity or of greed for these are improper for God's holy people. The, the Bible talks a lot about sex. The Bible says that sex was created by God to be a blessing for a, a man and a woman in a marriage. Anything outside of that is sexual immorality. And so here's what our sinful nature says. We say to God, okay, God, so where's the line? How far can we go? Do you know what God says? Not a hint. In other words, there's no line. Of course, what God says sounds so strange to our ears today. According to, to God's will, a Christian man would only see one other woman naked in his whole life. It's his wife. A Christian woman would only see one man naked in her whole life. It'd be her, her husband. That's all. So that sex could be a blessing just between them in their marriage. So here's the, the uncomfortable question that God asks us today. Is there a, a hint of sexual immorality in your life right now? It's not okay. Are you living in a relationship that's not in line with God's word? 
It's not okay. Do you use pornography? It's not okay. Are the TV shows or the movies that you like to watch just filled with sexual immorality? It's not okay. And I know we've got an excuse, right? We, we always have some kind of an excuse. Maybe it's, well, I'm not, I'm not actually hurting anybody else. And Think back to this. How much poison do you want in your food? Every sin is hurting someone. You're hurting yourself. You're hurting your spouse. If you have one, you're, you're hurting your future spouse. You're, you're hurting the God who made you. Among you, there must not be even a, a hint of sexual immorality, not, not a hint. And God doesn't just speak this way about sex. He goes on. He says, nor should there be obscenity, foolish talk, or coarse joking, which are out of place, but rather thanksgiving. Obscenities, right? Bad words with our mouths. God says, None. Not a hint. Foolish talk about others or about God or about sex. God says none. Not a hint. Coarse joking like we're a part of every day. None. Not a hint. It's not funny to God. Just like he always does, God focuses not just on our actions but on our thoughts and our words. And maybe as you're listening to this, as it's starting to sink in, you're, you're thinking, Pastor, if, if I were to, to try not to have a hint of sin in my life, I'd have to watch different things. I'd have to live my life a different way. I'd have to stop doing what I'm doing right now. Yes. It's exactly what God is saying to us. By nature, we have this, this thought ingrained in us that sin isn't really a big deal. That's why when we hear about sin, we try to get as close as we can without actually falling into it. God says something totally different. He goes on to say, For of this you can be sure, no immoral, impure, or greedy person, such a person is an idolater, has any inheritance in the kingdom of Christ and of God. Oh, if you and I live lives full of sin with, without repenting, God says we do not have an inheritance in heaven. Is that a big deal? Of course it is. And here's why sin is, is so serious. The Bible says every sin is really idolatry. If we're saved by faith in Jesus in our hearts, then loving something more than Jesus is, is the worst thing we can possibly do. And if you love that person, that relationship more than Jesus, that's idolatry. If you love that entertainment more than God's commands, that's idolatry. And what happens to an idolater? They miss out on heaven. Actually, it's even, it's even worse. God says, let no one deceive you with empty words. For because of them, the wrath of God comes on those who are disobedient. There's so many empty words. So many deceptions flying around today. Like, what's just natural? Or love is love. Or God wants you to be happy. Or you're free to do whatever you want. Empty words. So many empty words. God says, let no one deceive you with empty words. Because, because of them, the wrath of God comes on those who are disobedient. If you and I get comfortable with even a hint of sexual immorality or any other kind of sin in our lives, we deserve the wrath of God for our disobedience. So you know what God calls you and me? I want you to actually look it up. Do you have your worship folder? Look at the very first verse of our lesson. See, what, is, what does God call us? It says, follow God's example, therefore, as 
dearly loved children. You thought it was going to be something bad, didn't you? It should be something bad. What should God call us? Guilty, sinners, lost. And yet in those verses, what does God call you and me? His dearly loved children. Don't you say, how? With all of our sin, with all of the things that we just talked about, how? It's because of Jesus. Verse 2 goes on to say, Christ loved us and gave himself up for us as a fragrant offering and sacrifice to God. Even with all of our sins, Christ loved us and he gave himself up for us. He endured God's wrath for us on the cross. He won forgiveness for us with his own death. You are the dearly loved children of God. That means because of Jesus, your sins are washed away. Sexual sins are are forgiven. Sins of greed are forgiven. This is the gospel. This is the good news of the Bible. And our lesson has so many different pictures for the gospel. It says, for you were once darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. You were once darkness. Isn't that a a good description of sin? Of life without God? Darkness. The darkness of alcohol or drugs. The darkness of a relationship based on sex. The darkness of anger or bitterness. The darkness of sin. And what did Jesus do? He reached into the darkness and he pulled you into the light. He showed you God's goodness and God's righteousness and God's truth. Brings us from darkness into light. You don't have to live in darkness anymore. You're a child of the light. As he gets excited about this, Paul writes a little poem. It seems like this little poem was something that Christians must have been saying or singing together. He said, wake up, sleeper, rise from the dead, and Christ will shine on you. It's God's call to you and me, wake up. Of course, we can't do it on our own. We were sleeping and God woke us up. We were dead and God made us alive. And when you hear that, you can't help but think about baptism. Baptism is how we are born again, how God gives us his love and his forgiveness. And you're only baptized one time, but your baptism has an impact every day in your life. Every day, God wakes you up to repent of your sin. Every day, God gives you new life through his forgiveness and love. Jesus brings us from darkness to light. He brings us from death to life. He makes us the dearly loved children of God. This is the gospel. And in the middle of all that, there was a a little phrase that I never noticed before. It says, everything that is illuminated becomes a light. That has a big word in it, right? Illuminated. But it's really common sense. God says, everything that gets light shined on becomes a light. And so if God shines his light on us and in us, what do we become? Lights. This is how the Bible talks about our lives as Christians. You are lights. Not because you're you're trying to win God's love, but because God already loves you so much. You're lights. Not because you've got to earn your way into God's family, but because God's already made you his dearly loved children. We imitate God not out of fear or dread, but as dearly loved children imitate their parents. And this is what you won't find anywhere other than in Jesus. It's the motivation for living your life as a Christian. The public schools teach kids to be kind and forgiving and hardworking. But there's something missing. Do you know what's missing? It's the motivation. It's the why. It is only Jesus who brings us from darkness to light. It's only the gospel of Jesus 
that really changes our hearts. Christ's love compels us. Here's the why. It's because Jesus gave himself for me. It's because Jesus pulled me out of darkness into his light. It's because Jesus raised me from the dead of sin and gave me new life. Jesus loves you and he forgives you and he cares for you every single day. That is the motivation for living a Christian life. Christ's love compels us. And if we are the children of light, how can we walk in darkness? Why would we want to do that? That's why God's word tells us today, learn what God's will is. Learn what pleases the Lord. Instead of doing what pleases us, we want to do what pleases the Lord. And here's how it starts. Our lesson said, have nothing to do with the, the, the deeds of darkness, but rather expose them. It is shameful even to mention what the disobedient do in secret. It means instead of, of seeing a, a line in the sand, what God calls sin and thinking, how close to it can I get? God says, have nothing to do with it. Run away from it. Flee from it. This is wisdom. Be very careful then how you live. Not as unwise, but as wise, making the most of every opportunity for the days are evil. God wants you to be wise. And wisdom isn't found in math or science or social studies. Wisdom is understanding the Lord's will. And God's will is this, that every single person repent of their sins and believe in Jesus for salvation. It's the Lord's will that Jesus' light shine through us, have nothing to do with the fruitless deeds of darkness. Not a hint. Live as children of light. Our, our lesson ends with kind of a, a strange encouragement. It says, Do not get drunk on wine, which leads to debauchery, but be filled with the Spirit, speaking to one another with psalms, hymns, and, and, and songs from the Spirit. It says, Make music in your hearts to the Lord, always giving the thanks to the Father for, for everything in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Here is the strange encouragement. God's Word says, Don't get drunk on wine. Instead, be filled, get drunk on the Holy Spirit. You ever thought of it that way? Get drunk on God's word. Speak to each other with God's word. Sing and make music in your heart to God. Give thanks to God for everything. Be filled with the Spirit. We're trying something new this week at our church to help us out with that. I hope you've heard that this Wednesday, we're having what we call God's Word in Our Homes Night. Have you at least heard of this? It's been in our announcements every week for a number of weeks. It's actually this Wednesday. We want to have God's Word in our homes, right? At least I think we do. We want to have God's Word in our homes, but that's a lot harder than it sounds. How many of us have a Bible at home that just sits on the shelf? How many of us maybe don't have a Bible at all? How many of us have kids but we don't know what to do to share God's Word with them? We want to have God's word in our homes and sometimes we need some encouragement and some help to know how. So come this Wednesday at 6.30 and hear how you and your family can have God's word in your home because this is what God says. He says that the more that you get filled up with God's word, the more that you get drunk on God's word, you begin to realize something. Jesus is better. That's the only way that you can say, not a hint to the temptations in your life. It's only when your heart is convinced that Jesus is better. Jesus is better than sexual immorality. Jesus is better than getting drunk on alcohol. Jesus is better than anger or bitterness. Jesus is better. That's why you can say, not a hint. I noticed something. Do you know what the, the first letters of not a hint spell? 
Nah. Isn't that great? Nah. This is what Jesus leads us to do when temptations come our way. Right? Get drunk on beer? Nah. Not a hint. Jesus is better. Right? Give in to peer pressure. Nah. Not a hint. Jesus is better. Live with angerness and bitterness in my heart. Nah. Jesus is better. We take our sins, we lay them at the foot of Jesus' cross. And when temptations come our way, we say, nah, not a hint. Jesus is better. Amen. Let's say a prayer. Dear Lord God, Heavenly Father, in your word today, you give us some of your, your rules, your commands for our lives as Christians. We have to confess, Lord, that like we do in so many areas of our life, when we hear a rule, we immediately think of how close we can get, how much we can get away with. So often in our lives, that's exactly what we've done with you and your commands. You remind us today that you don't want a hint of sin inside of us, not of sexual sins, not of greed, not of coarse joking. Dear Lord, we're guilty. You should look at us with wrath. You should call us sinners. And yet, Lord God, by your grace, you call us your dearly loved children because you sent Jesus to give his life for us, to endure your wrath for us, to bring us out of darkness into light. Dear Heavenly Father, help us to live as children of light. When temptations come our way, lead us to say, nah, not a hint, because we have something so much better in Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Continue by confessing our faith in God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, the Trinity, with the words of the Apostles' Creed. Please stand as we confess our faith together. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was spared. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated. At this point in our service, we, we think about giving our, our offerings to the Lord. One of God's commands is to, to give back to Him our first and our best. And just like we heard in our sermon, I, I want to remind you of what our motivation is. When it comes to offerings, if your motivation is to try to get something from God or because you feel like you have to, then please don't give an offering today because God doesn't want your money if your heart isn't connected to it. Our motivation for everything, including our offerings to the Lord, is Christ's great love for us. When we see that Jesus gave himself for us, when we see how Jesus pulled us out of darkness into light, that's what leads us with thankful hearts to give back to him. And so thank you for your generosity and your thankful hearts in giving your offerings to support our ministry here at our church. We now go to our God with our prayer of the church. For a lot of, of people connected with our congregation, please stand as we go to God in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, it's a blessing to know that we're your dearly loved children that's what gives us strength and confidence even in the midst of the hardships of life. We pray for our, our member, Jean Parker, and her husband, Don. Don's been hospitalized over the past week. He's going to have surgery tomorrow. We're thankful that you've been with them even in the hospital. We're thankful that you've allowed doctors to seem to pinpoint the source of some of Don's health troubles. We pray that you bless his surgery tomorrow, that you give them strength and faith in you, that you allow him to, to regain health and strength. 
We pray for our friend Chris Dolan, who often attends our church. He's still recovering from COVID in the hospital. We're thankful, Lord, that over the past days, it seems like he's been beginning to improve. As he waits for his oxygen letter, levels to, to go up, we ask that you give him patience to guide the, the nurses who are taking care of him. And when it's your will, that you allow him to go home and to be again with his wife, Sharon, soon. Pray for all the kids in our congregation who are going back to school. We ask that you bless their teachers, that you be with the, the administrators of their schools, that you bless their classmates. Pray that the school year would be a blessing to them. But we also know, Lord, that there's things those kids aren't going to learn at a public school. They're not going to learn that you created them. They're not going to learn that Jesus came to be their Savior. We pray that you would use us to teach them where true wisdom can be found. We pray for all those who are here today who are struggling with a sin. Dear Lord, there's so many empty words around us, so many temptations on our own. We fall and we sin every single day. We need you we need your spirit. We need your word to allow us to say not a hint, to turn from the sin in our lives and to find forgiveness and peace in you. Give us the strength to repent each and every day and find peace in your forgiveness. Finally, Lord, we're distressed to see the situation unfolding in Afghanistan, to see so many people struggling and hurting, to see such chaos. Lord, this isn't our will for anywhere in the world we ask, Lord, that you guide what's happening there according to your will. We also put into your hands all the, the military service members who served in Afghanistan. It must be heartbreaking for them to see what's happening in a place where some of them gave up so much. We ask that you be with those men and women and strengthen them. Remind them that we can't always understand what's happening in our world, but we know that you're behind everything and that you love us. Pray this in the name of Jesus, our Savior, who taught us to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. You go about your day and another week with God's blessing. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look on you with favor and give you peace. Amen. You may we see it as we sing our, our final song, I Want to Walk as a Child of the Light. Just notice, like the first song, you have to turn the page to get the refrain on the next page. We'll sing that song together.